guys, how's everybody doing today? Hopefully everybody's doing good. Good to be on today, see how everybody's doing. So something that you may not know, and I, was, I think I've been talking about this, is about the awareness of your consciousness. And now we know that your consciousness is non-local. Like your consciousness, who you are, extends beyond your body, man. Uh, so it means you actually have the ability to influence the universe. That's right. You have actually have the ability to influence the universe, to influence your world, people, things around you. And this is this is this is powerful stuff, man. This is real powerful stuff. Uh, I don't think a lot of people get this and understand this. That um, you actually have the ability to change the structure of your life and your world through your mind. Your mind is not in the body. The, the mind is, a, is just uh, the entire universe existing a part of your body. So I think I'll let that sink in for a second. Then it comes, how do I tap into this power, uh, this mind power thing? How can I use it? To influence my world, right? You want to? How do I create stuff? The first thing is, well, number one, I mean, you have to believe, and you have to have faith, because most of the stuff that's going to come into the physical world, the source is an invisible source. So nothing ever pops in the physical without a cause coming from the natural, what we call spiritual or non-physical world. And I like to refer to that world as the quantum world, the world of uh, the particles of energy of beings of these type of things happen and keep in mind that you and I and all of us are made from these particles so just because they're out there they're also inside of you and then there's parts of us that govern how the system works because now that we've we are we exist in what we call a 3d world a three-dimensional world in a three-dimensional world we're limited by our mind. One part of our mind is very limited in this three-dimensional world. It's our conscious, logical mind. That's, that's a limitation mind. But also that occupies, there's a part of the mind that occupies within the three-dimensional world and also in the what we call 5D or non-local world. Non-local basically means uh, space, time, awareness. That's your subconscious mind. So the key is is to unlock the subconscious mind. If you can unlock your subconscious mind, then you have greater power to take charge and create your life. Point blank. If you can get your subconscious mind on board with whatever you want, then your conscious mind will also get on board with whatever you want. So you can use those two minds together conjointly, right? To help to create what you want, and that's what that's what that's referred to as alignment. When you can have the conscious and the subconscious become one, that's become that's called alignment. When you can become aligned, then you can start to create more. Now that's important because if you don't get the minds together, then they're going to try to do their own thing. If they try to do their own thing. Uh, you're the one that's going to do the suffering because most of the time they're programmed for what they don't want. So it's like, all right, man, so I literally got to go out and take charge of my own mind. I mean, point blank, that's what you got to do because, as I said, if you don't do it, the mind will do it itself. And listen, you don't want your mind to do it because your mind has a bunch of programs that's stored in there that is not for your benefit. A lot of these programs in your mind is the fear, the doubt, the worry, the lack. All of these gonna all of these create a lot of resistance in your body. This resistance is a blockage. It's like an energy block, man. It's gonna prevent you from getting to where you want to go. It's gonna give you these images, these different types of views that you don't want it's really uh, a thing you want to avoid 
when someone says yes you got to set your intentions that's the beginning of the process the intention setting the intention what is the intention the intention is basically the belief man or the decision that this is what you want and then when you set your intention you got to let your intention go with expectation and faith you know faith is a powerful thing you know even when it comes to the quantum world there's no derivative to describe faith good morning faith is like this mystery thing you know they talk about faith in the bible uh but we all we all have faith uh we just we just have to learn to exercise it and to put it out so that it can help us that's the only thing with faith man it's something that you have to practice just like with anything else if you want to create uh let go yes yeah, someone says let go of conditions grand rising how are you doing good to see all you guys here you know another thing that we have to keep in mind is um to get attached uh, we get so attached right to things in our lives right we get we, the attachment is an issue as well you don't want to i mean when i you know when you really think about it man um, if you someone asks and say, "Hey, man, what's the what's the thing that stops us? What's up? How are you guys doing?" I think the biggest thing that stops us is attachment. We tend to get attached to things, and we make them a lot bigger than us. That attachment is going to create this negative fear. This fear that you're not going to get it. The fear is what drives those feelings and those cycles in your mind, man. So it's it's important that you, you have an understanding of being free from everything. You know, free from attachment, free from need. The more free you are from these things, the more you they'll, they'll be able to come into your space so that you can manifest or create them. I mean, we talk, there's so much stuff about the law of attraction spiritual stuff all this stuff but it really comes down to how tied in are you to what to what you want how tied in are you you don't want to be tied into it you never you never want to be tied in to your desire you want to be open to your desire but not tied into your desire when you get tied in to your desire, that's going to create the flow of attachment. You want to be flowing with your desire. Flowing with your desire is basically meaning that, all right, you know what? I'm going to set this intention. Um, this is what I want. This is what I desire. And I'm just going to let it go. So someone asked me how to detach from someone. The same principle is you don't need anything the reason you're attached to things is because we feel need or validation that goes for people uh, persons uh, animate inanimate stuff so the secret is you don't need anything it's the illusion of needing that makes you attached to someone so when you wake up and realize that <clears throat> you start to wake up and realize that wait a minute I actually don't need this person I mean this person is something that I've conjured in my mind and then you see that okay wait a minute it's my perception it's my emotions that's causing me to feel this way and then that's that's when that's when you become free because now you're not attached to anything now and then you can do when, when you're not attached to anything you're open for everything right yeah you don't want to be attached to the thing you manifest that's 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 the big key here. Non-attachment to the thing you want to manifest. You want to you want to keep that attachment away. They used to tell someone here who's this Antonio Antonet says uh, they used to tell me I unattach too easy. That's a good sign. When you can become unattached, man, that's good. That means that you don't let anything control you. You know, you know, you know in our lives, guys, you know, there there are going to be times. When the mind is going to fight us and try to make us attach. And this is where your awareness comes in. This is where your faith comes in, right? 
because as bad as things look, you can always change it. Things can always change because remember, we live in a what? A non-local universe. It's, the ego is the problem. The ego, the ego, the ego wants these things. The ego wants the satisfaction, the validation, you know, and that's going to create problems for us. You don't want to live in the ego. See, there's two set. There's two sides to it. We have the lower self, and then we have the higher self. The lower self is more of a 3D spectrum. The lower self is where the ego, the conscious mind, all this stuff exists. And the higher self is who you truly are. The higher self has no attachment to anything. <clears throat> that's your consciousness. That's your, that's your heightened state of awareness. When you can get to that level, that's when you've mastered the game. Who's this here? Uh, Denning says, I'm, I'm attached to my dogs. I love them too much. <laughs> yeah, being attached to the dogs, your yeah, animals, it, it's, it's okay. But we were talking about a, a, like a, an obsessive need for something to validate. Most of us, we get attached to the physical or material stuff. Because there's, there's a picture that's been painted that what we want is tied into that thing. And because it's tied into that thing... We tend to put our emotions in there. And your, your emotions, remember now, what, what emotion, energy and emotion. Emotions create the field we live in. It creates our world. Your emotions are your subconscious mind's map to figure out what you want. If you, if you ever want to know what your subconscious mind is looking at, it's looking at your emotions. It's looking at, it's saying, okay, what are we feeling that's what he's looking say okay what are we feeling what is he feeling what is she, what is she feeling and based on the emotion you put out we're going to attract a lot of things that's going to incite more of that emotion see how it works good morning does scripting fit into this process someone's asking yes of course scripting is a, is a great way to get to your subconscious you could write it down not, not everybody can see or visualize things in their mind, but a lot of us can write. Yes, so someone says it's all about energy and realizing everything is a space of energy. Yep. Everything is a space of energy. One person say manifest a thing every day. Some say ask and let go. I'm confused. Okay. So one person may say manifest a thing every day and someone may say ask. And like, okay, so when, when, when someone, when you talk about manifest a thing every day, what they're basically saying is that the, the how it really works is this. You have to decide what you want, then you're going to focus on it. That's the manifesting part. Focus on it means either you're going to visualize it, you're going to write it down, and then what you do is you let it go and detach. That's the real process you do. There's nothing else you do after that. So you, you don't have to be tied in or so um, obsessed with it. You got to see it, visualize it, like open freely with like a, in your imagination. See it just as an imaginary fun thing. And then you have to let that go. That's the process to do that stuff. Please explain what heart and brain coherence. Yes. The heart is the most powerful part of our being to manifest because the heart, uh, for the record, when, when we have emotions, uh, it's pushed to the heart from the subconscious. So the heart can generate emotions and the heart can actually uh, manifest too beyond the subconscious. The heart can override the subconscious. What would someone do if they let fear and worry take over their mind? Well, when you let fear and worry take over your mind, you're crippled. You, you're not living for yourself now. You're living uh, in the future or you're living in a means that something's always going to be wrong. And the thing you have to do, I, listen, I'm not saying it's going to be easy just to start because we, we all have fear and doubt. But if you think about it, when it comes to fear and worry, what is that tied to again? It's tied to attachment to something. It's tied to attachment to a certain type of life, certain thing. And because you don't have it or it's not there, you get the fear to worry. So my advice is you always got to... You always got to develop the mentality to have like a neutral stance on everything, man. Like when everything is temporary. You know, there's nothing permanent here. You know, we're like we, when we go, we're not going to take all this stuff. We can't take any of this stuff with us. So uh, the, the, the point is the fear and the worry 
it comes down to our ego. The ego is the basis of all this. Because the ego says, you can't live without it. Your life's not going to be great without it. Da, da, da. You're going to suffer. You're going to do this. And all of that creates the fear, the doubt, the worry in our, in our minds. But if we kind of adjust our mind and kind of just stay present or focus more on what we want, we can overcome that fear and worry because we know it's an illusion. It's not happening now. It's the mind's projection of it. And believe it. Yeah, someone says believe it. And also, you know, when you can't change something, you change the perception of that thing. Someone asks, is it normal to have bad dreams of your or, uh, special SP occasionally? Yep, that's normal. It's normal to have that because the subconscious talks in different ways. So it's, it's nothing. See how it's work? So that's the thing about fear, man. Fear and worry, it creates anxiety. And when it boils down to it, it all ties down to because we feel attached or we need something to validate us. That's what it all comes down to. That validation or that need to be, you know, in that thing or have that thing or missing out on that thing is what creates the worry. It's like saying, oh, I can't go on. My life has to be this way. Da-da-da-da-da-da. Right? Oh, good. This is Jack. Jackie and Jackie. Jack and Camilla says, I will win the lottery tonight. I'll give you some money. Yes. I'm meditating for you to win the lottery. The jackpot is big. I know it's big, right? It is a Powerball, right? You can manifest that too. You can manifest... You know, you, this, this world, you can manifest anything you want. This reality. In this reality, we all can manifest anything we desire. Because this reality is not real. Even though they have the word reality, it's illusionary reality. It's just our brains and our minds. And our, we put all these things together. It looks real. It looks... Like, oh man, is this real? Is... No, it's not. It's how we see the world and you got you got to practice and get your mind focused you know the thing the thing about this is is the mind control the mindset the mindset you know you got to find a way to distract yourself from the negative cycle yeah who's this here moon girl people say we are in the matrix yeah we are in the matrix this is a this is a matrix here. The, the way this thing is set up, it's set up to get you attached, man. Look at your society. Everything is designed to make you feel a certain way, or either you're lacking or you're not. There's there's classes. There's you're either this or you're that. So when you think about it, everything is set up to keep you in a state of fear, doubt, worry. That's the matrix. Because, see, when you have fear, doubt, and worry, we're more easily, we're able to control, man. You know that? So, if you're wise, you have to be aware that, okay, we're, you know, look, the most powerful thing you have in your life right now, the most valuable thing you have, even more valuable than money, except health. Health would be the most valuable thing. This is the sec the most this is the second most valuable thing. Well even this you could put it the first most valuable thing. It's your attention. It's your focus. It's where your mind is. If you start buying into what they want to put your mind into, you are going to have a very hard life. Because you're always going to be in a state of fear, worry, and doubt. What's the definition of the matrix? The matrix is a systematic system of rules, laws, and governing, government based on a particular group of people's ideas and beliefs about how their, the world or the government should work. That's what the matrix is. It's, it's people, powerful people, uh, their ideas of what you should do, what, how you should live your life. It's someone else's game, man. They made it up. It's to control. Human beings love to dominate and control each other. Hmm? Who's this? Delusion. Who's this? Uh, Delusionani says, Aren't we multi-dimensional beings? There are many of you and many of 
me existing simultaneously. Yes, according to quantum theory, uh, that is true. We are multidimensional beings and we are here every, and that's why your conscious, consciousness is not local. That's why your consciousness can exist beyond space-time continuum. So we, in fact, we are multidimensional beings. Um, but for you to tap into that, you have to get into the, I, the higher mind or the, the subconscious, moving into the higher self, and that's where you can better be able to tap. And to tap into that, you have to tap into your higher self. But science is now showing that. I just said earlier when I opened this TikTok live here that they discovered that our consciousness, our awareness is not local in your brain. The fluid in, the, in your brain, the, the neurons and the um, protons, electrons, and the fluid in the brain, uh, when they look at an electron microscope, it's actually entangled too. That means it's entangled with the universe. So you are part of the universe. Your consciousness, your brain, is, it's not here. It's gone. Your consciousness is not here. Think about that. Who you truly are doesn't live here. It's somewhere else projecting here. Why does the whisper method work for certain people? Is it due to attachment to the manifestation? Yes. You know, guys, manifest manifestation is personal. Manifestation is a blueprint. A blueprint is what you take and fit to your own unique style to manifest. It's not it's not a one size fit all. It's not one for all. It's a blueprint, and you say, "All right, let me try that. Let me try that. Let me try that. Okay, this one works. This one. Let me tailor it to my to my way, and then I'll use my routine." You, when you're going to create, you have to find a routine that works for you. If you can't find a routine that works for you, and there's plenty of them out there, but it's unique to you. A lot, you know, a lot of people do. A lot of people, they love to chase like different methods, man. They say, okay, I'm going to do the 369. I'm going to do the water. Man. But is it working for you? Get what I'm saying? You got to find what works for you. And the only, thing you can, only way to do that, you have to explore. You have to practice new methods. You have to get into the to your unconscious. There's, there's a lot of things you must do to break that. What is unique for you? What works for you? Your body will tell you. Because remember now, each person, their own consciousness has a unique makeup. Thank you, Liz. Your sub my subliminal messages on YouTube have been helping you. Good, good to know. Yeah, sublim. <clears throat> Speaking of that, one of the most powerful ways that you can get and access this stuff is in your subconscious mind. You can get your subconscious mind to change by giving it subliminals, because subliminals go below the auditory level of the ego. Subliminals get right into this unconscious. Thank you. I truly love your content. Thank you. And that's where you want to go. Because, now keep in mind, guys, look, remember 99%, check this out, 99% of reality is missing from us. Of the true nature of reality is missing from you and I. Also, how about sound? Same process with the sound waves. 99% of the things we hear, in other words, we are missing 99% of the of sound. Our ears, our, our, it was developed, we're only picking up 1% of the electromagnetic sound waves, man. So that means right now there are things going on around us that we can't hear and we can't see. Could be higher beings. And part of that is the subconscious. Picks, can subconscious can pick those sounds up. That's why they make these frequencies so low. They're so like they're so light and hum is like a, a light hum sound uh, because it can get into your subconscious. 
Are we supposed to defeat our ego or work with our ego? You never, de you never defeat your ego. You cannot defeat your ego. You have to work with your ego. Without your ego, you cannot have the experience of love, of desire, of visualizing. So you can't destroy that, right? You need that to create. So the ego is like a two-edged sword. You gotta get, you gotta get a balance. When you get a balance with that guy, then you can start to change your life better. Am I ever? Who's this asking me here? Am I ever going to know who I really am? There's no need to know who you really are because you are who you are. You are that. You are awareness. That's who you are. When you when someone says, "Am I ever going to get to know who I really am?" They're speaking on an ego basis because ego is like, "Who am I?" You listen. You are everything and nothing at the same time. You are awareness. Your consciousness. So you don't. You are who you are. There's nothing to know who you am or I am. That's an. That's a three D concept. When you say, "Oh, am I this?" You are higher than that. You're above all of that stuff, man. And once you can realize that, you can shift your world. You can definitely shift your world. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are you happy? You have to be contented. You no, know, happiness, for me, you get happy, yes. But for me, my... My state of being is more of peace and neutrality, acceptance. Once you can accept and be at peace and be at neutral, then I think you, you can get all the emotions because you're never too high, you're never too low. You're just in a state of being and awareness. I think, to me, that's, I think that's the best state. I mean, it incorporates happiness. You feel good. You know, feeling good and motivated is good. You can't, and plus, you know, you can't be happy all the time, but you can present, you can be joyous. You can be peace, you can be neutral. How do we deal with envious haters? Uh, you take your attention away from them and let the universe deal with them because the universe is a self-correcting code. Yeah, the happiness thing is good to be happy, but remember guys, when you don't don't chase happiness, man. Happiness is within you. So what is with, what is happiness? It's a state of being aware of and appreciative. Is the, the most powerful state you want to be, guys, is just to be in a state of awareness, gratefulness, peace, neutrality. Never high, never low, don't get too attached. And then I think every, your life will be a lot better that way. Now don't get me wrong, you're gonna be faced with, diff with difficult things in your life. I'm not gonna say it's not gonna happen. There's gonna be times when you just wanna like stop living or stop trying. Because it happens to all of us. We go through things in our lives where uh, at first, it seems like we're not going to overcome it because we're used to a certain way. What it could be uh, financial, health, things like that messes up the quality of your life, your life in general. You know, it's it's natural, but you have to you have to understand that nothing is permanent. It's temporary here in the 3D, and that should give you solace that you should keep going, pushing, and you know, use your higher self for guidance. Yes, there's someone says uh, moonful. Yes, there's a lot, a lot of life, t life test upon our journey. How can we fix the ego if it shuts, shut down? No, you can't shut the ego down. You can recondition the ego. You can get the ego to buy in to you and to help you. But there's no way you can turn off your ego. It's impossible. You need your ego. Without, as I said, without the ego, you can't experience love. Happy. You can't experience um, the emotions you want, the desires you want. All those are attributed to your ego. How does energy frequently work with the universe? Ah, uh, well, the way energy works is it has two variables. It has always, it's a duality. So you're either attracting or pushing away. But the main component of the energy is we live in an attraction-based universe. So in our universe, we, we are constantly attracting what we want and what we don't want. So in our universe, everything is simultaneously there for us. What separates us is the, our attention to these things. What, your attention to the energy will decide what comes into your life. So when someone asks about the haters, what you do if you take your attention away from them, 
it ceases to exist. That means the universe will take care of them. But when you put your attention on something, like for example, when you have a problem, right? If you notice or something in your life, when you keep thinking about it or harping on it, what happens? It gets bigger and bigger. But if you can learn to just like let it go, or move on, or find a way to cope with it, all of a sudden that issue or problem starts to kind of solve itself. And that's because we're putting the energy on it. I'm not telling you, look, it's easy to do. It's not, I'm not saying that. But it's something worth doing because it's going to help you. You have to f learn and get your mind adjusted to say, like, okay, where I put my attention on, I'm going to create more of it. So if I take my attention away from this, then I'm going to create less of it. Yeah, mind over matter. Yes, uh, Ingenious says, EFT tapping helps you release the resistance to your problems. Yes, EFT tapping is really good. Um, there's a lot of methods you can do to, to release the resistance. You can do EFT tapping. You can do, uh, uh, what is it, NLP. Uh, you can get hypnosis. You can use meditation. You can use subliminals. You can do a lot of stuff. But you, you know, the, the key man is, is right. It's mind over matter. The thing is that you got to get your mind to overcome the, the ego, man. I mean, because every day you get up, you don't know what's going to happen. You can't, you cannot, like I, that's why the present moment is so important. That's why you have to be in the moment because that's all there is. Because it could change like this. And you got to appreciate what you have now. But the mind would love to look forward, man, and push you in the future. It's not, it's not there. Jasmine980 asks, how to manifest? Jasmine, you manifest by focusing on what you want. Then you impress it to the subconscious without attachment, have faith, and you let it go and let the universe unfold the process. Once you give something to the universe, the universe will give it back to you in the way that you desire it or even better. But the thing is, don't try to control what you manifest. Just let it go and let the universe do its thing. That's how it will work for you. That's how it works for everyone. See how it works? The secret is, man, like I said, guys, the secret is you just got to be in the state where you you got to be cool under pressure, man. You, that's that's the thing about this. You got to I'm not saying it's easy because the thing is look we're all humans. I've been there, we've done it. Like you 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 can be in a state where it's cool and under pressure, but your body is a, has a separate entity. You know the body has these feelings and these emotions and these nerves. That's why it's called anxiety because sometimes the body learns things from trauma. And even though you get your mind set, you, you'll feel it. But, you know, you can still condition the body to get on board with the mental. Because the mental affects the body. So don't just don't think that your body is controlling you because you may get up in the night with night sweats, with cold sweats, with your heart racing, with the anxiety. You start worrying. You have a little problem in your life. It's, you know, look, the thing about the mind is, man, this is what it does, man. I mean, look, I experience it. We all have, you know... Especially with me, man, I had an analytical mind, I had to work on it because the thing with my mind was like, when I, whenever anything would happen, like a small issue or something, my mind would just go out of proportion. It would, oh, it would be the end of the world right there. It would be like, oh, you're never going to see this, Not there's no hope. And it seems so real in that moment, right? But that's that's where you have to be the, the, pre, the present and have the awareness now to, to control, to understand, wait a minute. This is my mind here. I'm in control. I got I got to set this guy straight. Yes. Delusion says, yes, who's this? Delusion. Delusion Malini says, it's not easy because we've been conditioned to react to every little thing. Yes, that's correct. We're so e and you say we're easily swayed, man, and everything can tick us off, but and that's why we have to like regain our power, right? We got to retrain ourselves. Yeah, we have to retrain ourselves, man. Because if we don't retrain ourselves, we're going to be stuck in this loop. And this loop is not fun, man. It affects your quality of life. You know, no, no, one, no one wants to go to bed and get up every day 
in the morning or whatever you get up in the morning, you start sweating and worrying and heart racing or go to bed at night and you wake up every two, three hours because you're in this panic and this anxiety attack. Nobody wants to do that. Uh, but I'm just showing you how we can be conditioned and we can be, you know, the things we see in our lives can just have this effect on us, man, that just that just put us in these, these loop situations. And you don't want to do that. And I understand that. And that's the secret to all this. You know, it's difficult to control our minds, yes, but it can be done with practice and awareness of it. When you can become aware of your mind, then everything changes around it. It's not really difficult to control your mind. It's just it's, it's just discipline to control the mind. It's the discipline that's the process. Right? The discipline, the awareness, and the, okay, look, I'll say this: the reason the mind, <coughs> the reason the mind, the reason why it's so difficult for us to grasp our mind. Because our mind shows us things that we can't see. The mind show the mind will show you what is, but it won't show you what could be. And that so you can't get you can't pass the what is to what could be because your mind says, Don't go there because it's not happening. But that's where you have to force yourself to see what could be. Because that's how you're gonna create it. You don't listen to your mind and say, oh, it's never going to work. You're not going to do it. You're not going to be good. You're not going to heal. You're not going to get better. You just live with it. It's the end of the world for you. Your life is no good. Da, 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 da. Uh, you're this, you're that. No, man. You have to go beyond that now. You have to go beyond that. And how do you go beyond that? By sometimes you got to force to think positive. <laughs> someone says that rain will get some grits and bacon and biscuits. Yes, this is my someone says my problem is the rubber band effect. What I think I've mastered my state, I default into my old ways. Yes, the reason you default into your old ways is because uh, you haven't got your subconscious on board yet. That's a sign that the subconscious is still in control. So whenever 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 you finally got get your subconscious to bind, you're never going to fall back into the old state. I mean, you're you're going to go through things in your life. You may have a little bit of emotional stuff. But the core principle, the core learning will still be there. And you'll, be, you'll always be able to bounce back up. Right? That's what you got to understand about this stuff. You always have the ability to bounce back up. You can always self-create. You know, you got to remember... The past will be the past. Still, things happen in everybody's past. But it's not who you are. It's not your definition. It may be what you did, but it's not who you are. What you do and who you are are two different concepts. If you're if you're someone that's high on this in, in, empowering and enlightenment, you'll understand that. Because that's what happens to us. We try to get attached with our past. And our, and our past reminds us. And people remind you of your past and all that stuff. But keep in mind, guys, it's the past and not who you are. It's an illusion. It's a, th it's a process. We keep changing. Right now, your cells in your body change. Every your your practically new human new new liver cells, new uh, lung cells within it. the first twelve months, seven years, your entire body reproduces itself. You're a new being, and that is science proves that. How can you maintain high frequency uh, by focusing on what you want without without addict without like an addiction to it and an obsession, and just being in the moment. And being grateful. How to impress the subconscious mind. Repetition. Focus. Visualize. Scripting. Subliminals. Hypnotherapy. NLP. Uh, exposing new self. Uh, keep your mind on what you want. But you have to do that consistently. That's how you're going to get the subconscious to buy into what you want. Yet you have to. Well said. Who's this? Uh, Lutz Lurini says. You have to consciously work on your subconscious. I couldn't even say it better myself. Consciously work on your subconscious. Okay, someone says, Mark, what advice do you have for someone who is trying to manifest a better life for years? Stop looking at uh, things in time and years because you're going to create resistance. Instead, just keep focusing on whatever you desire 
and then be open and keep a positive outlook. Because when you're trying, in the words you use in the mentality, when you're trying, you're not going to get it. So just do it, just focus, just expect it and have faith that it must come to be. That's that's my advice for, to manifest something like that. See how it works, guys? It's a powerful thing when you can gain concept and understand and use this to, to better your life. All right, guys, thanks so much. This is the time I have for today, but I'll catch you guys back on another live. Take care.